Hello everybody, would like to present you today the system in an energized fashion. I had to um, make some changes to the setup um, because some of the components in my previous test um, were damaged due to over voltage, due to high temperature and so on. So the, one, the 10 kilowatt 1 amp dials for example, I burned a couple of them off. They are now replaced via very strong diets I will go later on to the subject. The plasma dome I will have to replicate that at a later stage because the effect was, was tremendous and I became a little bit carried away. Increased the power and let, let it running for too long so I burned it. Unfortunately this is cheap plasma dome set made of plastic and it became quite hot and before I, I notice it it burns through. So I will, I will show that at a later stage, I will buy some proper equipment, Pyrex tubes, proper stuff, and I will replicate that at a later stage. Let me go through the system I have here and explain you what I did set up. To power the system, I used in the beginning also the microwave oven transformer. It did run exactly 30 seconds and then it left me. So some of the components are damaged. I'm not sure exactly what is damaged. I haven't had a look. I assume it's a diode or the capacitor because I didn't use a frequency um, filter which I use normally for the NST in between and it might be that the frequency coming back from the system did damage the system. So I said okay, sort it. I did build this um, quite some time ago. So it's a 3 kilowatt um, high voltage system. So I use three NSTs literally, I can connect them all in parallel, so I use only the middle one, so that's one kilowatt. It goes up in my normal filter as used. I use 15 nanofarad. And because I use a higher value, I have to adjust the system as well. So let's go to the diode. So that's unidirectional. That means I use two diodes and because the power level of all our diodes I used before were not efficient enough, these ones are the strongest I could get my hand on, they are 90 kilowatt, 50 kilowatt, 6 amp it can carry and they work a treat. So they don't have any problem with any power I throw at it, they work. So we go standard on standard coil, counterclockwise here, counterclockwise secondary. I use them specific additional holders to keep them in position. Instead of the plasma door, I have to use now here an array of um, capacitors, so they have in total one nanofarad. Because of that, I had to change frequency. I did apply that at the end by using a terminal, so that works quite well. And of course, the standard equipment here, yeah, already known to you. So I use the spark cap and I use it in various power levels so I, I start here very very small it's 0.3 millimeter don't want to go higher because bear in mind my system is not built for too much power because it's supposed to run on a microwave oven transformer however it works quite well as you will see on the output side I use at one terminal just um, this fluorescent bulb connect nothing else. So that will show me um, the fluctuation of the power in the system. However I don't expect that it will be fully fully lit but we will go to that later how we can improve that. One of them um, a fashion I did show before you can crown it so I will do that as well but I will use an additional piece of equipment to improve actually um, the power transfer. Neon bulb is only connected on the capacitor on the receiving coil. Um, spark gap here between gives an um, approximation of the terminal um, potential. It's about one centimeter, so it's about 10,000 volt. And vacuum cleaner is not uh, is not switched on. Order three millimeter. Let's have a look. So the power level is quite high. It seems to be fully illuminated, but it is not. You see it on the right hand side, this fluorescent bulb. It dims slightly. Um, 
So I, I start the vacuum cleaner now. It's much more coherent as a power groove. So you see on a, s on a small uh, fluorescent bulb on top, it sparks through to the terminal. So it is more consistent. Um, looks actually quite nice. Power level at that stage for 140 volt is about 130 watt. So, <coughs> you know the game, I have connected a couple of more fluorescent bulbs in series. What I expect is that the pressure is not going all the way through, so it has only connectivity here, it has nothing connected on the other side. So, I'm not doing that because I want to show how much power system has, I want to show you the pressure, the electrical pressure, electrical potential going through the system and it has limitations, so if it's not strong enough, it will not go all the way through and it will hold a uh, stop at the, uh, at the middle. Let's have a look. So the sound of the spark gap is tremendous. It overwhelms the sound or sound microphone on the video recorder, video camera. So what you can see here is um, pressure is going through, power is quite quite high and the sparking on the terminal you see to the little fluorescent bulb is going through as well when the vacuum cleaner is directly connected. Um. Creating a return pulse now to the terminal remember when I did the test between one of the output coil and one on a um, secondary receiving coil has the strongest and most consistent power output. Let's have a look. The three uh, fluorescent bulbs are connected in in series and they connect also on the terminal so the brightness is, is on full level. Um, so it's a return pass. So that's reducing actually the potential on the top terminal. That means there is no sparking coming out anymore. So this return pass did prove to be very very efficient and can be considered as a stable connectivity. But there is another option available which I will show later on. Before we move on um, to my bifilar primary coil, I have set it now to 130 volt and here again the tool pressure test I make it specifically difficult to go through but have a look. Connecting only on the, on the bottom side, you can see um, the power, let's say, or the pressure is not high enough to eliminate all the bulbs which is expected and uh, starting the vacuum cleaner. So it's a little bit stronger, but it's still not enough to eliminate all of them. Let's have a look now. Connecting now the terminal to the end of the row, you can see again, it's a, it's a picture you have seen before, bottom line, top line is illuminated but the middle is not, so the pressure is only at the end available, but it's not enough to, to go through all of the bulbs. So that's going to change, going to show you how, let's have a look. I'm going to replace now the primary on the driving side with a bifilar coil with very special properties. So here we have one of the strongest cable you can get. It's a, it's a speaker cable. It's 6 square millimeter. It has 762 0.1 millimeter copper wires inside. If you ask me about the specific, I have to pass. I tried to figure out with my measurement the specifics of this coil. It has a millionth of an ohm and is even lower. I can't measure it. I can't measure inductance. It get, goes, to, um, goes to absolutely minimum. OL, it can't measure it. And it has no capacitance. So if I use this coil and I tried this coil previously in testings for with my um, function generator it performs rather bad. So what it means is the voltage output on the system because it cannot be tuned yeah, is around 50% lower than the other, than the other um, standard copper 
tube or copper bore coil I used before. However, now here in my charge system, high voltage, let's have a look. Bear in mind, I have at the moment yeah, 0.2, 0.3 mil. I probably have to reduce that because this coil is amazing. I have the bifilar coil now connected and we'll see how that works. So 0.3 mil is the same value. Um, by the way, it was 170 watt. Let's go and see how that works out here now direct. Let's say the op optimum condition. Let's see how that works. Let's start it up. So the power level going through the system is tremendous. What I haven't shown you is that the spark gap alone is 4 cm long now from 1 cm and it goes all the way through. Um, I had it on 0.1 mil and I could achieve the same and I used only 45 watt, not even half of it and achieved the same results. There are a couple of more tests I'm going to contact with a couple of um, other coils I'm going to use in my next experimentations. Start up without terminal connection. Same power watt and see how strong the field goes through with one connection connected to the receiving terminal. One terminal connection is achieving half of illumination. Um, you can use it a return terminal or you can go to grounding, but if you use grounding the problem becomes that the, the receiving primary um, is sparking through because it gives um, ground connectivity, reference ground and then um, you can't control it on your coils anymore. So before we conclude um, this video session and then move on to another one, I want to give you a little teaser. I reduced now the spark gap to 0.05 mm and reduce the voltage as well to 50 volt. Now let's have a look what we get out of here. I think that speaks a clear language that this coil is very special. Let's have a look how much power we use. 23, 20 watt. Thank you very much for watching and hope you join in and watch my next video when I'm gonna use a lot of additional coils to improve even further. Thank you. Bye.